Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video I'm going to continue what we started in the previous uh, example. We went through the calculation of buckling load of a simple beam supported on two supports at both ends, but the rotation about the longitudinal axis of the beam was constrained. In this video I'm going to model the same beam with ANSYS and we can compare the results. Just to recap what we had in the previous video, we calculated the 4 meters beam HEA200 for the lateral torsional buckling. And when the load is applied to the top flange, we can see that the buckling load is going to be 188 kN. And when it's going to be in the neutral, position or neutral line then it's about 230 and when it comes to be on the bottom which is called a stabilizing direction then it's going to be 277. Now here we have uh, ANSYS and we can start with a static structural. As far as I'm going to compare the results with the result of RFM from the global here we can adjust the value of modulus of elasticity to 210 gigapascal the rest can be kept as default we can bring hea200 a sketch and then just feel it select and change the display color now here we can pull for four meters. And then from prepare, we can use mid surface. Thank you, my friend, Tommy Hoika for giving this tip. And again for the web, automatically it is deactivated from physics. And here we can see that the sizes and the thicknesses are adjusted according to the sections so it's very straightforward then we just need to pull these the other line that's all and the last is sharing the topology here we have only two lines it should be noted that we want to apply the load in the mid or in the middle or the neutral uh, location of the cross section. As a result, it's better if we split this web to two parts exactly in the center. Here we can see we have two surfaces uh, usually i use this shared topology at the end but if you do something afterward it is better if you check that there is no line to share the topology for now that's all we can just close this geometry window and go to the model what we are going to have having the supports as boundary conditions and apply the load there is no connection and better to have a reasonable mesh. For this, I use face meshing, selecting the surfaces, and also I set the size to 20 millimeter. Fine mesh, and so we have a remote force applied to one edge let's start with the top and so it's going to be i start with 100 kilonewton 100 kilonewton times four it will be 400 kilonewton in total that's all so it's applied as a line load you can use other uh, options as well if you like 
Then the boundary condition at both ends, it's very important how to model them. Remote displacement would be the best choice for this case. And then you just need to select those edges that are forming this boundary condition. Then if you leave it the behavior to be deformable, it means that the uh, edges are able to be distorted. It means that the section or the boundary condition is able to deform. As far as the boundary condition or the end of the cross section is in a way that it cannot deform, we need to change this value to be reached. The next is we assume that there is no rotation. So about Z it is zero but about x and about y, it is free to rotate. But in x, y, and z, I can assume that there is no movement. So if you want to duplicate the same boundary condition, then you need to select these edges and just change the geometry. But if you look at this table, you can see that the location of being effective is still in the other end. As a result, it is always better to select these, come to here and change also the position that everything looks to be what we want. Then we just need to solve. Coming back to the main window here, we are going to have the eigenvalue for buckling. Just drag it to the solution update this part as far as we have the results and then coming back to the main window in the analyzer setting we have some options maximum modes to find is adjusted to two so we can keep it for now then i change this include negative load multiplier it means that if the load is applied in the other direction what would happen uh, so I set it to be no, it means that the load is going to be in the negative direction of Y. Then you just need to solve it and waiting for process to be done. In the solution, we have these values, create mode shape results and just evaluate all results. If I come to the first mode, we can see how it's deforming. So this is the first mode as we expected. To ensure that the beam is uh, free to rotate about X axis, we can check from the formation of the aesthetic structural. Here we can see that it is free to rotate and you can see that the boundary conditions are not distorted. It means that it is what we wanted to have. And here we have the mode, the first mode. The second mode is completely local, but the first one is the global one. Here is the load multiplier, 1.718. So if we come back to our MATCAD, so we assume that the load factor here is 1.7181 and the Q from ANSYS will be, we assume that it's 100 kilonewton per meter. So 100 kilonewton per meter times load factor. So let's go this way to the top. Q and sys to the top. One hundred seventy two kilo 
newton per meter here we have 188 with the approximation that we weren't the difference is 188 minus 171 or 72 even divided by 172 which is only less than 10 percent so we can see that our results is quite close to what uh, according to the numerical solution we can get let's change the position of the load to the neutral axis and solve it again meanwhile okay let's have it now the multiplier factor is 206 Neutral axis and the value is two hundred and six. Here we have two hundred thirty kilometers. And finally, we can change the position to the bottom. solve it one more time meanwhile I can bring these to better position and then control copy let's go with bottom And here we can see that now the first buckling mode is not glue wall anymore. Now it is changed to be completely local. The second one is also local. For finding the first glue wall buckling mode, here we can change maximum modes to find, let's say to five. I can delete these as well. So the first one is local, the second one is local, the third one is going to be the, the first global buckling mode. Here we can see that now it is 2.43 243 in our calculation 276 so it's uh, as it is a kind of approximation uh, you can see that it is not in the safe side but the value is quite close to what we got from the ANSYS model the fourth mode and the fifth are also completely local. That's it. It was the end of this video. I tried to explain how to calculate the buckling load uh, with a simple beam under distributed load with the use of ANSYS model. In the next video, I will continue the same example, but this time with RFM from the Lewal. We can compare the results and check it out. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.